Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another Game Theory Struggle. If you're finding these or my other videos helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Today, we are going to be talking about Bayesian Nash Equilibrium. We are going to be talking about games in which one player does not know as much information as another player. We're going to be talking about imperfect information, something called information sets. Now, the way we are going to do that is we are going to use a Cournot game and an example of two firms who are choosing output levels where one firm does not know something about the other firm. And we are going to use that example as we talk about these concepts. So once again, timestamps below. If you need to jump around, feel free to watch a section of the video more than once. But let's go ahead and get into it. So before we go into the full-blown Bayesian Nash equilibrium, I want to real quick review the way we write down dynamic games or the extensive form of a game. So remember, this is a choice node. This is a choice node owned by player E. This is from the firm entrant game that we've seen before. And we have actions, so this player can enter or not enter. And then the other player has a choice node with two actions. At the end of the games, we have payoff nodes. And we said that this orange is our equilibrium path or the way we expect the game to go. Again, if you're a little unsure, feel free to go back and watch that dynamic game video. Now let's go ahead and get into this example and let's talk about how we're gonna set up the game. So just looking a couple things, when as we read the game, then we know that Player B has some research. We don't know whether or not that research was successful. Player B will know whether or not that research is successful, but player A will not. So let's go ahead and set up the extensive form of this game. The way we are going to do that, we are going to introduce a new player. That new player is nature. That player nature is assigning one of two types to player B either successful research or not successful research. So those are the two quote unquote actions that nature can take. So we'll call this success and this not. And then player B can choose whether or not they want to have high output or low output. Let's go ahead and put low over here. So low output and then high output. Similarly, if they are not successful, they can still choose between low output and high output. And I'll make these lines just a little longer. Now, player A will see player B's decision and can then choose high or low output, which I'll just call H and L, just so I'm not writing high and low a bunch of times. So here's high here's low, here's high, and here's low. Now I'm gonna do something we haven't seen before. And the reason that we need to add something here is because even though player B is choosing high or low output, player A has no idea why. Player A doesn't know if B is choosing high output because they were successful or if firm B is choosing high output and they were not successful with that research. So we are going to add a cloud of uncertainty around A's choice. So if player B chooses low, it could be the case that they were successful and we're up here in this top right part, or it could be that player B is not successful and we're in this lower right part. So we need to add a cloud. What does that cloud look like? It's just a dotted line around this side and similarly for around the high part. This thing right here, this cloud, this is called an information set. Now, as you might imagine, player A doesn't know whether or not they're up here or down here. And if player B chooses high output, they don't know if we're really up here or down here, which means that whatever player A chooses on this side, they have to commit to because they can't determine if they're up here or down here. What does that mean? That means if player A wants to choose high up here, they have to automatically choose high down here. And similarly, if they want to choose high output over here, or maybe they want to choose low output over here, 
they have to choose low output over on the bottom. For another way to say this, this is not allowed. You can't put player A choosing high up here and playing low down here. They are in the same information set, so they need to be making the same choice in both nodes inside an information set. Now, let's add some payoffs to this game. So we're just gonna copy these numbers straight from this table. Feel free to try this yourself and see if you get to the same numbers that I do. Now, as in before, when we did backwards induction, we're gonna do the same thing, but now we have to think about A's choice as a holistic choice anywhere in this cloud. We can't treat this part of the game separately from this part of the game. They are not part of the same sub game, in other words. Up here, choosing high output is better for player A because they get seven instead of one. And down here, we can see that they also do better by choosing high output. In both cases, player A wants to choose high output regardless of whether or not B was successful in their research or not, which is good because if these were different, we would have to split this into two games, one where player A chooses low for both of these and one where player A chooses high for both of these. Luckily, we don't have to do that here. On the other side, you can see that if player B is choosing low output, then it's always better for player A to also choose low output because nine is better than five in both of these cases. So player B knows this because this is what we call common knowledge. So now player B knows that if they're successful and remember player B absolutely knows whether or not they were successful or not, then they know that if they choose high output, they're going to get three. And if they choose low output, they are going to get one because player A will choose low over here and high over here. So they will choose high. Now down below, if they're not successful, if they choose high output, they're gonna get one. But if they choose low output, they are going to get this three which is really nice, that's better than one. So they're gonna go this way. So if we do the equilibrium path, it's going to look like this, where player B takes the card from nature to find out whether or not their research was successful or not. If it was, they choose high, and we know that player A chooses high. If player B turns that card over and they see they were not successful with the research, then the firm B will choose low effort and firm A will choose low effort as well. Now we know that there is a alpha chance that the research succeeded and a one minus alpha chance the research did not succeed. So we can find out exactly what alpha has to be for this Bayesian Nash equilibrium to hold in the way that we said it does, where B chooses high or low effort, whether or not they were successful. Okay, so now let's think about what alpha has to be in order to make this work. So first we know that for player A, we want player A to choose high output instead of low output when player B is successful. So that would mean that the payoff to A of choosing high, which we know there's an alpha chance, that they are going to get seven because then we are in this situation. Now, if they're not successful, we know that player B is choosing low effort. So if we choose high effort, we're gonna get five and there's a one minus alpha chance that happens. So plus one minus alpha times five and the payoff to A of choosing low output. Well, there's an alpha chance that we are in this situation, which means if we choose low, F, low output, then we're gonna get one, so alpha times one. And then if we choose low output, we are going to get nine because then we're gonna be in this situation right here. Remember that when we're talking about A's payoffs, we're assuming that B is following this equilibrium path behavior in both cases which is why we're talking about this seven and three, one and three, nine and three, and five and three here. So we can compare this because we want player A to choose high output for this equilibrium to work. So we say that alpha seven plus one minus alpha times five 
has to be greater than or equal to alpha plus one minus alpha times nine. Now we can go through the algebra. This is two alpha plus five. This is nine minus eight alpha. And if we continue, this is going to be 10 alpha is greater than or equal to four, which is the alpha is greater than or equal to two fifths. So as long as this alpha is greater than or equal to two fifths, this equilibrium will hold. So hopefully this makes Bayesian Nash equilibrium a little more clear in how to write out the extensive form of a Bayesian Nash equilibrium game and find the Bayesian Nash equilibrium. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're still confused, comment below, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.